Hello again, this is PC Delta Link, back with more of our Enigmatica 2 Let's Play Normal Mode. And this is episode 50, part 2. So as I had said in the previous episode, as we're going through all the changes we made to our base, uh, we broke this episode into two parts because it was going to be way too long to have it in one video. And you already know how the format for this is going to go compared to the first episode, so with that out of the way, I will... Yeah, we'll just end this and we'll continue right back with our tour where we left off at. So, I hope you all enjoy it. The Batania area did not require as much updating as the rest of it. Mainly because, of course, the upstairs was pretty much done already. This is still one of my favorite things I managed to create in this playthrough. I do love this little Batania area up here. I love the... This is the first time I really tried a big cosmetic overhaul on something of this scale. And, yeah, I really liked the mossy cobble, the mossy bricks, the cracked bricks to add more life, even the textured dirt, for crying out loud. And I love water, and so the four waterfalls in the middle, you know, we are. And it's a pretty good setup. I do like this. The one thing that was not done, though, was this area. You know, we had our portal to Alfenheim right here of course but the rest of this room was very unfinished we really had nothing else going on in this room and we never really even went back and worked on it and so you know we planned to have a little balcony out here because this was kind of a natural overlook onto our bridge but it just hadn't been done and we had our second bridge right here of course so that was another project that we worked on in the next step in our tour is we worked on this Batani area. There is an area below here that is not finished yet and it did not get finished in the update that I've done because I'm still not done with that room yet and I'm still not 100% sure how I want to build that room. So I am saving this until the time is right. But in the meantime, and I'm going to sleep through the night real quick to get it back to daytime. Okay, but in the meantime, here we go for our Batania update. Okay, so our Batania area, the upstairs floor did not change a whole lot. Um, I took away the torches, and there's now painted glowstone in different spots up here, but really, I didn't have much in this room I wanted to change. So a lot of this stayed exactly where it is. The only thing that changes is there's now glowstone here and there around the room. That's literally the only difference up here. Downstairs, you remember before, this room to the right was completely untextured. We have now added our texture matching the upstairs to all of the room and the ceiling. We have our cracked stone, our mossy stone. We added our living rock, well, painted cobblestone, but it's living rock to the lower floors in here. And our, everything else stayed exactly the same. We finished our balcony out here, which I'm gonna, I'm saving the surpriser there for last, but you can see kind of our balcony here. There we go. And yeah, it looks okay. It's kind of basic, but I really wasn't looking for anything fancy here. And we have our, some living rock stairs here and a small pillar that looks pretty decent in my opinion. I kind of like how it looks more natural, like it's part of the mountain. So, all right, we didn't really finish this hallway out here because um, this bridge out here was never done, and I will get into why I did not finish that when I get to the bridge part of the episode. So, okay, that's about all we have for this part of the tour, so let's move on with the next bit that I have in store for you guys. Okay, the next area I wanted to show you guys that we've updated is we are down in our second level next to our induction matrix. And you know we have our gas tanks here for monitoring this, the hydrogen chloride, the oxygen, the sulfuric acid. And down here, of course, we have our uh, machines for our four times ore processing setup with the brine and oxygen, hydrogen chloride creation down here. And all of our gas lines snaking up into the maelstrom of cables and pipes that are up here so we had this room of course and then next door we had our 
somewhat started but never finished room for our five times ore processing. And we kind of done this cosmetic start with the factory blocks and the sturdy and rusty plates and dotted rusty plates. But you can see there's still just a lot of exposed stuff. The walls are unfinished. The ceiling's not done. We never really got back to this room. We had started it and we never really finished it. Both due to lack of time and due to lack of like figuring out what I wanted to do in here and how I wanted to implement it. So that is the next thing I'm going to show you guys is we have now um, much more refined these two rooms. So with that being said, let me show you what I've done with these. Okay, moving on now to the remade five times and four times ore area down here. Um, as before, you'll notice the tanks here are gone. We have removed those. Those are upstairs as shown previously. But the biggest change down here, there's a few. The very first thing you'll notice here is that the cables are gone. All the piping, all the power cables that were just snaking up into the ceiling and up into the poor area up there, they are all gone now. So they've now been uh, put into quantum entangler porters here and you'll see them sitting in the floor here. And if we come over here, Whoop, too far. <laughs> if you come underneath here, you see this is where our power cables are now from this quantum entangler porter, which is also providing the brine that is being used here. So, okay, and then we finished the ceiling in here. We intentionally left this kind of a, a layered look up here. So that's that way on purpose. And now for the five times room, we kept the look of the factory blocks and using these rusty plates, but we took a page from the uh, recessed walls upstairs and we moved these sturdy blocks back one. So they're more recessed into the wall. It gives the wall some more depth. And then we added more of these, these uh, rusty plates are the way they're set now. It actually looks more like these beams are actually supporting the room and are structurally important. So I do like that. Um, the reason I don't have it done here is you'd be able to see these rusty plates from outside and it doesn't look right. So we didn't do it for that wall intentionally. Uh, but you notice the torches are pretty much gone in here. We have our glowstone in the floor providing the light. And yes, we kept these iron lanterns on purpose in here because I just like how they look and add to it. And you notice the cables are hidden up here now. Those are all gone. Just like upstairs, this gas line goes into a quantum entangle porter to go upstairs so that's hidden and unseen now and yeah the room just looks a lot better like this this is how i'm planning to leave these rooms currently i don't have any plans to work on them again to change anything at this time but yeah it's definitely an improvement it's more finished and we kept the look of that we'd previously started so overall yes i'm very happy with how these two rooms turned out so, all right, I think that's it for this section. Let's move on. Okay, the next area I wanted to show you guys the before shot of was our underground river area. So, I absolutely love this place. I've said it before, but I'll keep saying it just because I can, but this is probably the biggest river I've seen naturally occurring underground in a cave in any Minecraft map I've ever played. And I think it's just gorgeous. It flows beautifully. It's very large. It goes a long way back in these caves to its source blocks. And it's completely flowing water the entire time. There's no still blocks anywhere on this pathway. Except for obviously the sources, wherever they happen to be. And it flows all the way out to this larger ocean body of water out here. And of course our drill room down there. And I was just... When I first found this, it just blew me away, and I knew I wanted to incorporate it in the base and the construction of it and work with the cave to naturally put areas inside this river. And, of course, um, we did partially expand this. You know, we put our foot bridges here that are oak and oak slabs, oak fences and oak slabs. And we built our ME controller room down here and our molecular assembler room and our draconic evolution room and of course the four and five times more processing but this area was also largely unfinished 
we had a couple more bridges planned. That's what these three torches are. They were supposed to signify another bridge like this one going across to here. Same thing with those three torches in a row over there across the river. And our, uh, our applied energistics rooms were really completely unfinished. You know, no texturing done anywhere. Just no cosmic tying up. There's holes in the walls and just, it looks tacky. And this room, we at least had some areas lined up for more molecular assemblers, which I will probably add them someday if my crafting needs require more crafting recipes. I do have plenty of room in this area to add more of these 3x3 three three cubes that I can create with them. And then our Draconic Evolution room, you know, we'd started trying to come up with stuff using purple a little bit. And we were playing around with some of these iron lanterns. This is the place I first came up with them. That's why there's four of them hanging out here. But I never really did anything on this room. And it kind of bothered me. So, with that being said... Oh, and I didn't want to change the area too much. Like, I don't want to texture every single block in here. Because this is a natural cave with the river. And... Part of my idea in the construction is I wanted to leave a lot of that natural cave in. I wanted to leave it untouched, that I'm part of the cave, not destroying and taking over the cave, so to speak. So, alright, with that being said, here is our overhaul to the underground river area. Okay, we're back here in the underground river at the bottom of the elevator shaft. And the first thing you might notice is the bridges are a different color now. They are now mangrove wood and mangrove wood slabs. The reason I went with mangrove is, you remember upstairs we had our blue and white color scheme going on, and these textures are much more white colored. And so I think they go with the rest of the base. It goes well with the blue water. Um, so yeah, I liked the color and we decided to keep that. You'll notice we have, we didn't texture the whole cave, but we did texture our footpaths and where we're walking. So we did put our sunken stone here, some stairs. We added the missing bridges. You can see we have the bridge here to the Draconic Evolution Room and the bridge over here. So all the bridges are now in place down here that I was going to build. And the next thing is here is the Emmy Controller Room now. Now, I will admit this room is kind of plain. In fact, all the rooms on this floor are kind of plain. Same thing you can see here, our hard drive room. And then we have our molecular assembler room. We left these in case we added the more molecular assemblers because this is where they'll go. That's why I didn't bother texturing this yet. Um, you'll notice these rooms are just a flat texture on the walls, our painted glowstone and painted cobblestone. It's marble, small brick. And we also added a window to the Draconic Evolution room and more small brick and marble blocks or that's marble brick my bad and made the room look a little prettier we took one of the draconian blocks and added it under the fusion crafting altar um, we left the charge where it is so yeah um the reason these rooms are more plain and also the next section of the video is this was some of the last stuff that i worked on for this um for this project, for this cosmetic overhaul of the base. And I will be 100% perfectly honest with you guys. By the time I got to this point in the construction, I was running out of steam. I was very tired. I'd worked so hard on all this. I was very much burning out at this point and just wanted to get it done. Um, I was extremely close to just leaving these rooms the way they were. I was very close to just saying, you know what, we've done enough, let it go, we'll get it later. Probably not getting it later, but yeah. I was looking for anything justified at that point. So I did manage to dig a little deeper and I pulled through and I was able to at least basically texture these rooms even if they're not done. I do plan to finesse these later, but I just could not go any longer on this. To give you an idea of how much time I spent on this and why this took so long. I've been working on this for about two weeks now, give or take. And my estimates of how much time this took to come up with the designs, to 
actually build everything in game and of course we're not in creative mode we don't get to do that to build everything in game to text to decide on the textures to then get all the texture blocks even when it's just painted cobblestone I still have to get all those and paint them all but I probably spent about 40 hours on this project possibly a little bit more but I think 40 hours is a pretty safe guesstimate for how much time this took so yeah I was a little tired by the time I got done with this but enough about that so yeah this room it, it at least looks better than it did it's not to its final form I will probably change this at some point but it's gonna be a while because I need some time to recharge after this so let's move on okay next up here we're back in our molecular assembler room because we're gonna go downstairs so this is of course our automated processing room where we have our different machines for all of our processing recipes that sit down here and cook or enrich or create whatever we happen to order them to from our system and this room is closer to finished compared to a lot um, the ceiling is not done obviously but the floor is pretty much done and you all remember how awful this floor was in here at one point it was absolutely horrendous how bad this floor was but now the floor is done and we had the walls built the outside area was not done I never finished the outside hallways here and there's still gaps in the floor in certain spots the ceilings very untight yeah here's a big hole right here yeah, our water exposed over there and then of course we have our next area below which this room is completely unfinished there's just an open cave here that runs across I've actually run into enemies down here multiple times they're just chilling in this area down here below the um, inscribers that I guess there's just an area in here where the torches aren't covering it so they spawn I never bothered to hunt it down and figure out where it was because they couldn't get to me up here so I didn't really care but it just highlighted just how unfinished and rough this room was and you know stuff exposed from the ceiling from the areas above our back hallway here of course is completely untouched and nothing's been done back here I still do like this room because this is the first time I've ever automated inscribers for the processors and I really had nowhere else to put them except in their own room and it just made sense to put them below the main processing room but this was like one of the furthest down on the list for I had no idea what I was going to do with this room and it was not important at the time to me either so alright with that being said let's show you what we've done on here since then okay back in our molecular assembler room again and we didn't change a whole lot down here in the processing room the only thing we really did and again as I mentioned before we were kind of running out of steam by this point the only thing we really changed is we went ahead and added the textured areas to the outside walls of this room so it looks much more finished now you don't have the open gaps where appropriate we used cable facade to hide the cables in the ceiling to where they didn't show as much and so the room looks a lot cleaner as a result and then downstairs we also did finish this room we did close it off from the cave um, we added basic um, chiseled stone for the floor and ceiling and all that we did the outside area and made that look much nicer but again these were the lowest priority things to get done they almost did not get done at all as I said I was very close to just saying screw it I'm not messing with this right now but we did get at least some basic work done on this so all right let's move on to the next room and one of the ones that's more relevant to where we're currently at in the playthrough and of course we have our Thomcraft room over here that we dug out we had dug out a pretty good sized room to start this mod off because we didn't know how much space we were going to use we didn't know what kind of room we were going to need we knew we were going to have an infusion altar eventually even though we haven't quite gotten to that far in our playthrough yet but that is coming it is going to be here within an episode or two probably but anyway you know we had just our bank of 
crafting implements over on the wall over here, a research table and focal manipulator. But the room was, of course, completely unfinished, and that was kind of on purpose just because it was fairly new and I hadn't even decided what I wanted to do yet for how this room would look. Um, and of course we managed to get our um, ME system all the way over here by linking a cable under the bridge here. So at least this gives us access to all of the items in our system without having to go back over to the base. That was critical to have over here just for sanity's sake. And of course we had a cave up here that led all the way back to the outside actually. But yeah, this room was completely undone and I hadn't even decided what to do with it yet. But now we have come up with a design for it. So with that being said, I hope you like it. Okay, here is our updated Thaumcraft room. So you can see we added some great wood logs around the walls. We have our arcane lamps that we unlocked not long ago. Um, this hallway is this way because if we expand this room and, you know, move further into this mountain, this will be where we'll dig out. That's why I didn't bother texturing this. But we moved our stuff to this side of the room instead. And we have our crafting terminal over here. We paint it purple. Uh, the cable behind it. We have, this is where our infusion altar will be. It's not done yet. You can see there's cobblestone where the altar is. But this is where the fusion altar, fusion crafting altar, the infusion altar will be. We have these pillars here, and this is primal void, void stone. And I love this texture. Look at that. It has like a shimmering effect to it. And then we have normal, well, it's painted cobblestone, but this is normal void stone here. These are actually silver wood logs around the perimeter of this to give this a bit more character. We have arcane stone bricks and tiles for the walls and the floor and marble tiles and of course the ceiling as well. We have a dome up here, a small dome at least, but it's something. And so yeah, these five blocks are where the infusion altar will be. That's why I just kind of left them there. Um, before you ask, the reason why the pool is here and this is undone is I don't know what to do with this yet. And I still need the water source here for now, but yeah, at the moment I um, didn't know what to do with this, didn't have a decision made, so I just left it for now. We'll end up changing this later, I'm sure, but yeah, for right now I think this was fine. So these arcane lamps actually cover a far greater range than you would think. They can actually create a spot of light, you can't see it of course, um, out of their torch range, out of the range that they normally cover. So we actually don't have much painted glowstone in here because the arcane lamps provide almost all the light in here. So something funny that I found quite amusing when I was trying to set this up. So you notice we have the great wood logs, of course, but then here we have painted cobblestone that looks like the great wood logs. There's a reason for that. And see here we're back to great wood logs. So when I was setting this up, apparently the fire under the crucible was setting the logs on fire that were up here. And it was just like, how is it reaching that high? But yeah, so I had to change them for cobblestone because the cauldron was setting them on fire. <laughs> so, all right, with this done, I now get to move on to the final and probably my favorite piece of work that I have done for this cosmetic upgrade for you guys. Okay, and now the final area I'm gonna reveal to you guys and the thing that I'm probably the happiest of that I've worked on on this was the hallway approaching the bridge here and the bridge itself. And of course, this was quite an undertaking. So we had our, you know, our hallway outside the induction matrix room. This was a completely for the most part unfinished hallway we had part of the floor done there's some chiseled stone here but our bridge is a piece of cobblestone all the way across that's all that amounted to and it was functional but holy cow it's tacky <laughs> it's certainly not elegant there's no form to it it just it served its purpose that's what kind of mattered there so 
it took me a long time to design this bridge and the different parts of it and I am going to go through that more in depth when we're on that part of the video but yeah I'm just as happy with how this turned out as I am about the Batania area if not probably more so this is the first time I have attempted to do a large scale bridge construction like this and well I think rather than saying anything else on that I think I will let the results speak for themselves so with that being in mind here we go okay for the final part of the tour of our updated base I've saved my favorite for last and what I'm most proud of for this and so we'll start with the hallway approaching the bridge out here and you see we have our we have one line of marble staircase here kind of just to make this wall white we have our recessed walls including our fancier ones with the more ruined marble and the marble pillars in it and we put that on both sides we have our wide hallway with the tile and the concrete and so on to the main attraction this is the bridge that I have constructed to go across to the Thalmcraft area nice little lag right there so it doesn't look like much from the top admittedly it's just one flat five wide thing uh, the first thing you'll notice though is these paving stones of travel these are from Thomcraft, and they actually increase your movement speed dramatically. So I'm going to move across the bridge at a normal sprint speed. So you can get an idea of how fast I am with that. So that was the normal speed. Now, just watch the difference when I run on these instead. Oh, I didn't run over that one for some reason. There, it touched that one. <laughs> Don't know why it didn't grab that first one. It should have, but you can tell that the movement speed is dramatically higher and it actually changes your field of view and you step on these it actually zooms out your field of view a little bit and then when it fades it goes back in so okay granted this doesn't look super amazing for the top probably but the real prize is the sides of it and the pillars that are supporting it so here is the bridge we have constructed this took a lot of time to design and build but I cannot emphasize how I just really love how this turned out and I am very very happy with these results it's probably the happiest I've been on a project since I completed the Batania area so this bridge was kind of built in phases I spent a lot of time in a creative world designing this and honestly the first thing that I um, took one of the longest parts of this was designing the archway for it I really didn't like what I was coming up with at first. The few first couple designs I came up with for the arch, they didn't look right or they were too small or too big or whatever. And I eventually came up with this design, which I think has a nice arch that's not too steep, not too shallow, not too long, etc. I think it looks fairly balanced. And then I slowly just added to it from there. This was all just stone brick at first, just flat stone brick. Um, and then the first thing we came up with was these little side pillars that make the columns themselves look more rounded it just brings out their shape more and makes them look rounder which in Minecraft round is kind of hard to do um, after that we came up with this little alcove down here and then we came up with the two alcoves up top between each section and then we designed these little outcroppings up top up here to just kind of accentuate the bridge more give a little more pop to it and just bring it out a little bit more and make it look good and then finally we wanted to put a contrasting color in here because these backgrounds were just stone brick at first and eventually I decided on marble brick well it's painted cobblestone but it's marble bricks <laughs> and then of course our lapis lazuli gold trim down there and yes the pillars do go all the way to the bottom of the water here so they do go all the way to the floor of the ocean um, they are hollow on the inside I didn't bother filling them in because why there was no point to doing that so it did take quite a few blocks to do this and these are stone bricks these aren't painted cobblestone so I did have to craft all that too 
But I love how this looks, especially, I'm glad it's nighttime right now, especially at night. I think the painted glowstone that's in the different parts of this just brings this out very nicely, and I think it looks very good. Uh, the only thing I don't really like about this bridge, to be honest, is this right over here. So the problem I had over here is, you know, we have our pillars going into the water, but right here we couldn't have that because it would have disrupted the underground river that was flowing out of here. So I came up with this idea to use another pillar to, like, support this partially built pillar, so to speak. But I'm not 100% happy with it. I'm not a huge fan of the archway. I don't think it looks right. I don't like how the pillar itself looks here. But I honestly am not really sure how to change it at this point. I'm, I'm kind of out of ideas for now on what to do differently here and how to make it look better. So... It's going to stay as is for now and until I come up with something later. So, yeah. It's not a huge thing, but something worth mentioning. Yeah, overall, I just really love this. The iron bars, ornate iron bars in between each, each section. Um, I'll go into more of some of the details in the process of creating this bridge in the supplemental video I'll be putting out after this. And that will go into... A lot of the other design choices I made and why and some of that but for now these two episodes that it's taken to show off this base have gone on oh before I end this I forgot to mention one important thing I said I was gonna address this later and I almost forgot so you notice this bridge here it was not done obviously I have a reason for that a couple reasons first reason I ran out of time and as I'd said previously, I was kind of running out of steam and going on empty for my creative drive by that point. But the other reason I decided to abandon this for now is if you look where this bridge hits the ground over here, it's actually pretty close to the top. So you can't really have a huge room there. And the other problem is if you just go straight into the mountain here and dig out another hallway or whatnot, you're going to wind up running into the Thalmcraft room. You'd pretty much run right into that. So... That wasn't a good solution here. So what I came up with, and also why this is not done, is I think I'm going to have this bridge when I build it. It's going to come out here and then curve left. And then go into the mountain over here, probably around here or so, probably right there, somewhere in there. And uh, that will allow us to expand into the mountain in this direction and also keep us away from the Thomcraft area. So... That would be quite a project. It was enough of a project for me to come up with this bridge. But to design another bridge that would work for this. And then a curved bridge at that is something I just don't have yet. So at some point I will work on that. But that's going to be a ways off. I'm going to have to design it and all that stuff. So, But for now I think that's where I need to end this. I'll cover a little bit more or anything I forgot to mention in the supplemental video. So, I hope you all really have enjoyed this. I had a great time building this. I'm very happy I was able to overhaul this base for you guys. And, um, yeah, it was just a fun project to get done. Oh, and the same thing with this bridge over here. I ran out of time on this, and I did not get to it, and I haven't designed anything for it yet. That's why this bridge also is not done. So, also a future project. But that's where I'm going to end this for today. So thank you all for watching. Thank you all for sticking with me for this many episodes so far. And we'll just keep going and see how many more episodes we can get out of this. So I hope you all have a great day. And I will see you next time.